In this video, you're going to learn about Adam's story. That's right, Adam speaking to Adam. I still remember the day I met Adam in person. He joined one of my mastermind events in Ireland. And this was a couple of months after he joined my program. He had signed his first client for content creation and social media management. And he was a cool dude then, and he's a fucking cool dude now. Adam is now making around 20000 per month with his email marketing focused agency. It's been amazing, and it's been very fulfilling to see the journey Adam has gone on. But in this video, we're going to break down exactly how he went from zero to his first five and 10k per month but also the journey from 10k a month towards 20k per month so that you can know how to approach those two different journeys to get there faster all right adam what's going on man appreciate it. adam how's it going thanks a million for having me on really appreciate it it's good to run it back a second time. <laughs> of course of course the first wasn't enough exactly right exactly i know i know i know realistically adam it's like so much has changed right like back when you did an interview with us before, I can't remember the exact number of clients you had or how much revenue you were doing, but yeah, definitely nowhere near where you're at now. So what has changed? Man? Yeah, to be fair, like back then it, it was probably early days for me because like, I just transitioned over to kind of focusing more on email marketing. Yeah. So God, I can't even remember when that interview was, but basically like the, the only kind of thing that's changed is time really and just kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. over the past however many months that was like i'm not too sure but like it's kind of funny because like before coming on i was kind of thinking like you know about how like nothing can kind of happen for like you know a month two three months and then it just all happens at once so i'd say like really since summer like things have kind of really taken off uh like even god even in october there just before black friday actually mid-october we took on four clients in like the space of 10 days. So like there's just things like that that can like come out of nowhere and like just put you onto the next level. So um, yeah, that's kind of what's changed really. Like I've just stuck with it. Like, like I actually can't even think like it's just I've stuck with it, stay consistent and like just things happen. Like it's inevitable really, like isn't it? I love it, man. I love it because, you know, people watching this video specifically are probably trying to figure out what was that one thing, right? Like what was the one tactic, the outreach method, the strategy, whatever that you did that took you from a few clients to now, you know, in and around $20,000 a month, right? It's a massive, massive deal. But like you said, man, that's, that's the truth, right? It's yeah. put in the time you knew it was going to happen. And four clients in 10 days, you would have fucking dreamed of that back then. Yeah. Like you yeah. thought that was years and years away, but here we are. And so I think Adam, what would be really, really interesting is that journey of zero to your first five to ten thousand at once that's what yeah. most people struggle with right because once you get past that part, like you said it's just time like you will get to the next level as long as you consistently push in that direction yeah so, tactically what did you have to do to go from zero to that first 5k and then 10k as well i think really really like like i say like okay zero to five like you're doing a lot of it you're doing everything basically right but for me, like I can only speak from my perspective, what happened is when I was kind of in and around that level, we actually came across like um, a brand who was at like a really high level. So I knew like, oh my God, we can get these guys such a good case study and use that then to pitch businesses who are that size. So we kind of caught like one nice break there where like we came across like true outreach, of course, came across this brand, got them exceptional results. Like we haven't like upped the pricing or anything thing like that still. Like we completely undercharged them. Like we could be char charging them way more. Like for brands the same size that we're charging them like multiples of what we're charging them. So yeah. we, I won't change that, but like basically yeah, for, all, for us, it was just finding that break, getting the really good case study. And then it's just your clients will start talking. So like for like, I suppose this doesn't really relate so much to the zero to 10 K stage, but like, I suppose it does actually because like what I always try to like stress with like the, like myself, I suppose internally and like with team members now is that like service delivery is number one because like, okay, in, in, with email marketing in particular, it's like, there's so much people offering that, right? You need to have a good reputation. You need to get good results and you do have to have an exceptional service. So like, like keeping that number one is like, is key. And um, so like, I think if you can like just find like maybe two, three clients, get them the best results you can get them and like they'll either start talking or else you can use them as case studies it's just going to snowball and if you stay consistent with it it's just going to happen like facts 100 percent, man i find it a lot you know to be honest when i was in the agency for me like client results was always important but because i had a business partner my role was by definition yeah. more marketing and sales i yeah. 
oftentimes just say, like, I'll, I'll input and I'll help the team and how we can improve client retention. But at the end of the day, that's his role. It's his job. So I know yeah. that times for me where like I wasn't as in touch with exactly what you just mentioned. Yeah. Should have or could have been. But now with the coaching, like since day one, that's one thing we've we've always put our our I wouldn't say our sole focus on, but it is number one when you look at every head yeah. because if we get a bad result with somebody or they don't get what they thought they were go- gonna get, as you said, people talk that goes yeah. past the rear. Then like but seeing you got results that I'm see- Actually on that, Adam, sorry for coming across you there, but like just speaking about reputation, I think like it's, it's so important because even like to give you an example, like we've taken over some accounts from like some other big agencies, like in the space and like the things we saw, like it's, it's quite, it's, it's bad, like, right. And like, it's not only that the, like the client doesn't get a, a good service, but now other agencies are knowing that like, you're not up to, you're not up to scratch and then they start talking. So it's not just on the client side as well. Like you actually have to like deliver to the best of your ability. So like, no, like you're not giving anyone an excuse to say anything bad about your service. Uh, so yeah, like for me, that's so, so important. 100%, man, 100%. Very similar to us, Adam, like we, uh, we got lucky. Our first client was that big break where we got a great case study, a great results. Mm. How are is that? It's phenomenal. Like with that client that you got, Adam, you said you wonder shares, right? So you yeah. could work. However, how many clients do you think you've got off the back of that case study from that client? Oh God, uh, like, well, I'd say all of the clients really, but like, and just through referrals, they've probably referred us, I'd say the equivalent of, let me just do the math now, it might be a bit slow, maybe about 60 to 70,000 in annual revenue worth of clients. Hey. So like, it's the, like, that's the ROI you get just from giving it, like delivering a good service. Um, so yeah, like the ROI has been mad. Um, there's actually a few other brands as well we're talking to for months who we've gotten referred to by them. So could actually be more, probably will be more than that. Could be actually close to this, the six figure level, like over the space of like maybe 18 months, I'd say. Amazing, man. Amazing. And tactically say with email marketing, Adam, like what are some of those things that you've seen other agencies do that are just a no go? The, the things that make you cringe when you get into an account? Yeah, so funny one, actually, we t- we've we taken over an account. Well, actually, this is probably in summer. And um, basically, they were working on a performance deal, right? So charging a percentage of the revenue that they generate. But like normally, uh, like the service provider we use, Clavio, it, it, it has a default attribution window of five days. Um, so like most times, like most agencies will probably leave it at that. Some might change it. Maybe they might go off like a last click attribution model. Anyway. This agency ups that attribution window to like 15 days or something. So basically what, what they were doing was over attributing the revenue that they were driving. In other words, like fleecing the client. Like, so there's just things like that that happen. Like you'd often see, of course, other agencies then like blasting the entire list because they might again have a, a performance deal. But whereas like that could destroy a client's email list in like a matter of weeks, to be honest, it's, it can be that quick. Like, you know, and it, there's, there's lots, there's lots out there to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And so, Adam, I know, I know for you, like you said, you did a lot of average at the start. Okay, so that was in that was zero to five k, ten k at one stage. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you mentioned that you know a lot of your clients have been referrals as well, and then you've had a case study, which has obviously helped your average go on yeah. the ten k a month to twenty k a month. Did you do the same things? Did you continue over the same outreach or not? Not really, to be honest with you, Adam. And like my outreach, like I keep, like I keep saying it, but like it, it's never really been like the, like my kind of best. Uh, how would you say? I haven't been the best at outreach, even from the get go, right? Yeah. Um, and like I think even more so from like ten to twenty, the difference there is like kind of I wouldn't really say network, but I suppose it is networking, getting to know other agency owners. I'm um, just making more connections, whether that be online or in person. Um, like, do you know the way they say, like, you're the average of the whatever five friends, but like, you, they don't have to be in person either, do you know? Um, so just doing a bit of like, yeah, connecting with other people. And then like, you know, someone might have a client, they'll say, can you jump in on this, on, on the email side? Likewise, like, you know, we might have some referral partnerships set up with other agencies where, you know, we get our clients to work with them and vice versa. So. That's probably given us about four or five clients, I'd say. Um, so that has been a difference. Sorry, we, we are still doing outreach, but the outreach I'm doing now is much more um, much more personalized. It's not really like mass cold email marketing, which is totally fine. Like that does work. Um, like it's worked for us. 
But like the brands that I'm trying to target, um, you do need to do that extra bit of work to kind of get their attention, their inboxes, DMs, whatever it may be is absolutely bombarded. So you do need to like put in that extra bit of work to try and get their attention, show your value. So um, that's probably been the change really, like the, the client acquisition methods we've been using and um, just more so leveraging who we know. Um, and like, you know, if I heard myself saying, like if I heard someone else saying that, if I was back starting off, I'd be like, oh my God, like, how am I going to do that? But the more and more you stay in in the kind of the environment, the more people you start knowing, provided that you can actually, you know, reach out to people and you're a normal human being like or whatever. But uh, yeah. Solid, man. Solid. Yeah, it's underrated, like you said. Like, you know, we don't really speak about that in terms of the tactics and strategies because yeah, it can be hard to place the ROI on that. But yeah. as you said, if you are directly setting up referral partnerships, well, there you go. That's clear. Yeah. And then just, you know, on more a mindset level, when you're around people that are making money, either mm-hmm. with you a little below or above, surely mm-hmm. that's your lower level. Yeah. If yeah. you're slacking off or, hey, I'm comfortable at this level, well, maybe the four other guys you know are all like, oh, no, I'm trying to double my business. So yeah, yeah. That's going to push you on as well. Oh, absolutely. 100%. 100%. Solid. Cool. So Adam, I assume then, you know, in that early stage, you did probably everything yourself, right? Like all the service, yeah. everything probably had 95% profit margins in the business. How has that changed now? Yeah. So like, just even in terms of day to day, it's, it's more so, um, like managing, managing the guys, um, kind of like just making sure work's getting done and stuff and making sure they're happy and they're not like, you know, they're not too stressed with the amount of work that they have. Um, what else? Like. I've been putting a lot more time into like putting out content on LinkedIn. Um, so just trying to put some stuff out there to kind of build some form of like ecosystem to get some clients. Um, and yeah, it's, it's more so like focusing on the systems, focusing on, um, like various different automations that we're trying to set up. Like for example, like the last two weeks we've been trying to like, you know, really streamline our onboarding process. So it's completely just seamless. Um, like that's just such a minute thing, but like it just has such a big effect on the whole the whole relationship um but yeah it's more slowly just operating the systems and um, making sure the team's happy making sure the clients are happy as well actually that's a huge thing because i do like the majority of the client communication so taking catch-up calls and um, just updating them every week or every day in some cases and um, so yeah that's kind of what it's looking like i am still doing a bit of service delivery as well um but like i do enjoy it you know um, and i think it's good to kind of have your finger on the pulse to know what's going on because like you don't want to turn up to a client call and then like not actually know what's going on in the account. I think it's very important to like have um, a good knowledge as to what's going on in every single account that you're on. Yeah. Then, man, I can just imagine that check-in call and you're like, <laughs> how's everything? And they just start offloading all the things that one of your team members might have done wrong or, you know, didn't yeah. email before it went out. Yeah. yeah. Clients yeah. love it as well though. Like clients love the, the like, I actually have a client um, at the moment and I was telling him that like when we were hiring recently, I was telling him that we we're bringing someone else on board and he was like, like, does that mean I'm not going to be speaking with you anymore? And he wasn't the only person who said it. So like, I'm going to realize that the clients like that kind of like founder led approach and um, they appreciate it. Um, and although it might take me more work, like it keeps them more happy. So like, and that, if they're happy, that means potentially more referrals, more business, longer contracts um, and all that good stuff. 100%, 100%. I'm like th- that right there is talking points. I think we could go down, you know, for days, right? Yeah. There's not just one way to scale your agency. You can mm-hmm. do it in fucking so many ways. So like the approach you mentioned where you've kept a pretty lean team, you're still in touch with service delivery, you're still handling most of client communication, you're doing your check-in calls and the level that you're at, there are people that are at and doing half of what you're doing in terms of revenue, but might have all of it outsourced, all automated. But that's a very different agency, right? So that's a lower profit margin agency. Yours is obviously way higher profit margins. In terms of point results, maybe the results aren't as good. Not that, hey, if you outsource everything, quality goes down. Just naturally, as you said, if you're, yeah. on, you're on the pulse, it is harder to keep that level up. So I think it's really important for people to understand that as well. Like there's literally a hundred ways to do it. You, you got to yeah. weigh this works for you and Really, I think it comes down to your long-term goal, which is my next question, Adam, because when I started the agency, I thought I would do it for 10 years. Yeah. Well, at least 10 years. I was like, this is the thing. And I kept that call probably for at least two years in. 
And then there was a point where, you know, the partnership I had, I, I just didn't see that specifically lasting 10 years. So I still saw the opportunity with the agency, but I didn't see it in the same light I used to see it. So it changed, yeah. right? Yeah. Of course. For you, like where, where is that goal? Like, cause when you started, did you think you were going to do this full time? Did you think it was just going to be a thing on the side and what's that? Yeah. yeah. So when I started it, I kind of like, look, I love the agency. I love it. But like, am I going to be doing email marketing when I'm like 50, 60 years of age? Probably not. So like I'm using this as a, I don't want to say this because like it's, this is like my life for now. Do you know what I mean? But like, okay, if I be realistic, maybe in five, six, whatever years time. I would like to start shifting into more kind of sellable businesses such as e-commerce. I also like to invest in kind of physical assets as well, even physical businesses. Um, that's kind of like the the longer term goal. Um, and like obviously with, with the clients that I'm working with, the connections we're building up with the clients as well, you never know stuff can happen off the back end of that as well. Like this is something that I say to the guys a lot actually about like the clients that we work with because like, like, like not only are they our clients, but like they're also potential business partners down the line. Um, yeah. it, it, like to some people that might sound ridic ridiculous, but like if you have a really good relationship with them, you don't know what can happen off the back end of that. Um, so like, look, there's a lot of opportunities there, but like if I was to give a kind of brief overview, I would say probably e-com physical, physical um, assets slash physical businesses in the next like five years, that's what I'd be looking to do. But I want to keep the agency for as long as possible because it's a nice cash flow business. It's now it's kind of relatively low stress. And um, depending on the week, we just had Black Friday there recently, so that was a bit of a a bit of a crazy week, but um, crazy month actually. But um, yeah, that's probably the goal. It's a uh, not nice. very concrete, like, but yeah, no, no, but it's it's an idea, right? Yeah. Like, it's a vision of how that will change. You know, I mean, yeah. that's important because if you're going to start an agency and just say, "Hey, I'll do this for forty years," like, <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do it for 40 years? Probably not. You'll probably do it for a few years, get as much cash flow as you can. And then, as you said, your your interest is going to change. You're going to be- Oh, 100%. 100%, man. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, man. So when it comes to the, the e-commerce stuff, right? Because I, I imagine most of your clients are e-commerce based. Would email yeah. mark makes the most sense, right? Do, like, do you think the skills that you've learned now, and obviously the work that you've done, the results you've gotten, and probably just from the conversations you've had with with all these founders and these marketing managers, do you think that would lead you to want to start your own? Or would you solely be looking at the partnership where you might take equity in an existing e commerce uh, e commerce business? Kind of kind of both, to be honest. But like there's some clients out like the, obviously I don't want to be annoying every single client I want to call with, but like the ones we have really, really good relationships with, not saying that we don't with everyone, but like, you know, you always kind of have that one, two, three clients who like you just click with yeah. um, and like I would just be picking their brain about anything to do with like you know stock levels how do they manage that like what's your goals for the next 12 months how does this work how does that work um, and like they appreciate that because like you can't really look especially for email marketing or if you're doing paid ads you can't look at the business in a silo like just in your service mm -hmm. um, category like if I was to just, just talk to them about email marketing like it, it's just a bit one dimensional you have to understand about how the whole business works um, so yeah, like I'll be picking their brains a lot. They probably get annoyed out of it, like, but um, yeah, like to, to answer your question, I'd say a bit of both, to be honest. Um, I don't know as of yet, but I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, but like what I'm just trying to do is stack up a load of cash when an opportunity comes, just pounce on it. Um, and like, yeah, I don't know what that strategy worked, but we'll see. Hey man, it's not a bad strategy. It's just not <laughs> happen. Solid man, solid. Um, Adam, I'd love if you could drop just some some of those gems, you know, some of the things that you've probably learned that you really fucking wish you knew when you started. Because look, most of us make a hundred mistakes when we start off with anything. But yeah. I think in the agency space, because there is a lot of noise, there is there's a lot of people that are teaching it that you know did it for six months and then yeah, they, you know what I mean. So yeah it's really important that people get actual real information from somebody that's done it or yeah for a long time or is currently doing it you're currently doing it on so yeah. what are some of those gems some of the what are it's mindset shifts realizations tactics that you think someone should not like i think for me really the one thing is first of all like not to be comparing yourself with like you're comparing yourself with like people online mm -hmm. even if they're at the same level as you as well right I had a very interesting conversation with a good friend of mine, actually, who's in the same business. Um, 
And like, he kind of started around the same time as me and he was a bit ahead of me and I was kind of just kicking myself over it and I kind of got a bit bogged down. And I kind of said it to him, like, you know, kind of laughing. And he said, like, Adam, like, we've, we've two like owners, like there's two, two founders, right? Mm. He said, you do, you do 40 hours in a work week, we get 80 done. So he said, it's just natural, right? So that's one thing for me, trying not to compare yourself with other people. And um, everyone will have their different just timelines. Um, and as I was saying at the start, like, you know, nothing can happen for months and then it'll, it'll just all happen at once. Um, so that's really important to know. Um, like another thing as well is just staying consistent with it. Um, kind of going back to that, like nothing will happen for months. Like it's mm-hmm. those months there where it matters the most. Like when we hit 10K, we went straight back down to seven and then straight back up and down again and then straight back up again. So it's just up, down, up, down. Yeah. Um, so it's just trying to navigate those those periods. That's That's really what I found to be important. And that just comes with experience as well. So if you stay consistent with it, you stay in the game longer, you get used to those um, used to those kind of minor hiccups or whatever. Because I remember, I think I said to you ages ago, like about, I think I lost the client. This was when I was doing content creation. I was like, God, yeah. how do you handle it? And you were just like, you you like finished your skin and you were just like, it's the tough skin. And I remember <laughs> for ages and I was like, yeah, he's he's dead right. Like, why am I, why am I getting bogged down over this? Like, yeah. um, so things like that just, just happen with time, like, you know. 100% man. Important to hear though, right? Because you can imagine somebody watching this video starts their agency in the next few months, gets a couple of clients, shit goes wrong, lose a couple of clients and they quit. Mm. Right? They, they decide that's it. I can't do this. This is not for me. I should do something else. And that's probably happened to hundreds, if not thousands of people that have started so, in CS, you know? Also as well, like, you know, some people have like the 10K milestone, like just brain into their head, like thinking like, I have to be there like so quick or whatever. Like it took me like took me like a year before I actually first mm-hmm. like got introduced to this space. It took me about a year to hit that first ten game month, and then it was just st- straight up from there. So like it can take you longer. You need to play around with things, test different things out. Right. Like as you know, like I tested out doing some content stuff, then switched to email. So you just have to play around with a few things, um, and don't like don't be getting yourself bogged down if you don't hit like ten k in like three days. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think a lot of people like that's that's probably where they um where they get annoyed. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. I think the key there, as you said, right, it's a simple as you stick with it. You stay consistent. If you do, and it's so cliche, I almost hate saying it because I sound like a broken record, but I'm even saying it to myself when I'm saying it. Because when I started my coaching, for example, I thought that would explode, right? Agency was doing multiple six figures a year. I was like, oh, I'll start this coaching. It will just yeah. blow up in, you know, one to one, I'll make thousands. I think, you know, for our first four months, we had a total of maybe 2,000 revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 a month, right? Yeah. Everything. Even if you're good at one, you're going to have to learn the next. So consistency is key, man. I'll it is. Key key. You know. Where can people find me? God, I'll have to remember now. Um, well, I'm posting a lot of stuff on LinkedIn lately. Like a lot of my focus is going there. So like there'll be a lot more kind of e-commerce style content there. That and YouTube as well. Instagram then is a bit more personal. Um, and that's quite a bit, really. Twitter as well, and a bit of TikTok. But my main ones really would be YouTube and LinkedIn for the kind of e-commerce style content. So um, that might be valuable to some of the listeners. I'm not sure, but hopefully it is. Hundred percent, hundred percent. If you're watching, or if you're still watching, you're obviously clearly interested. So do drop Adam on follow, check out his stuff, and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. So there you have it. I will leave the link to Adam's socials down below. So do check him out. And if you would like to work directly with myself and to get the help that took Adam from zero to 20K per month, then you'll see in the description of this video, there is a link where you can go click the link, book a call with us and have a chat. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed.